Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Luke. Uh, I have to admit, um, I thought when we got back together in worship, it would be a little bit different than this, but um, it is what it is, right? We have to deal with the situation at hand, and we are in a global pandemic. Um, I'm glad we're not outside. It's really hot this morning. <laughs> um, but we do know that um, if, if one of us were infected, it could be floating in the air, so we're trying to be wear masks the whole time today and um, circulate the air. And, um, and if you do get sick, please let us know, and we have a list of everybody who's here today, and we'll let them know, and they can either be tested or quarantined or, or, or um, take appropriate um, measures so we don't spread the virus. That's, a, that's the best thing we can do as a neighbor is, you know, wear our mask and social distance so we don't spread it. Because, you know, 40% of the people may have, who have it, don't even know they necessarily have it. So that makes it even harder. Um, so our service today is going to be all in your bulletin. Um, it is the service of the word out of the ELW. Uh, Jacob and I were saying, we don't re use that service a whole lot, so if it doesn't sound familiar, let Jacob sing it. And um, as you know, singing is also an area that's kind of like discouraged, because if you really project out with your voice, then in, in theory you're spreading, you're, you're pushing the air further out. Um, so we're not, we're, we are going to sing, but at the same time, if you want to look down and mumble, that's fine too. <laughs> Uh, Jacob is going to be our designated singer, and Maggie is going to be our designated singer, and um, you and I can sing as, as um, uh, you know, as the Spirit leads. Um, I think we have very good social distancing today, so I'm not too worried about that. Any other questions before we start worship? The, the big factor would be at the end, we're going to be tempted to um, visit with one another out in the narthex and catch up because that would be good Christian hospitality. <laughs> but if, um, if you are a high risk or you, uh, um, we really don't want to do that, basically. We'd rather just head out to your car. Um, obviously, if you need to do something in church office or um, do a couple quick things, that's fine. But um, let's try not to congregate in the narthex. All right. Please stand. We'll start with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Gracious God, during this time of global pandemic, we ask for your protection, grace, and guidance. We pray for all who are isolated or hospitalized. We pray for all medical and essential workers. We pray for our families, both near and far. We pray for patience, protection, and perseverance. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of, of for our children's message. So, you guys are going to stay put, okay? Good morning. So I'm so glad to have some people back here and some people at home. <laughs> We're going to do the children's message, but the kids can't come up. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you get where you can see me, and you can still talk to me because I can hear you. So today I brought some seeds. I found them in my backyard, and I thought, you know, a lot of people are planting things. So I thought I could plant some seeds here at church. be a pretty good idea. I'm sure Bill would love it if I planted things all over mm -hmm. the place. So I'm going to put my first one right here. How do you, how you think that's going to grow there? Think it's going to work? Yeah, it's, it's not, is it? So why is my seed not going to grow if I just put it right there? What does it need? Yeah, it, it needs soil. What else? What does it need, Sam? Water. Yeah, I can't pour water right there, right? That wouldn't work. What else does it need up in the sky? It needs sunlight, doesn't it? So for that seed to grow, it's going to need good soil and water and sunlight and all the things that God gives us to grow good seeds, our good plants. But I don't have any of that here. So in the reading today, we're going to hear about um, good soil. And God wants our hearts to be good soil. He wants us to make sure that when we hear the word of God, which is kind of like a seed that we are good soil, that that word can grow in us. Just like if I planted my seed outside, it would be able to grow into, I think this is actually a tree that I got it off of. Um, it would be able to grow if it were in good soil. So there's two things I want you to think about. The first is we want to be good soil. We want to be open to God's word. And we want to nurture that. And that means we want to read the Bible. We want to pray. We want to worship either at home or here at church with others. The second thing is, in this story, you're going to hear about how the seeds get thrown. And some are on good soil. And some are on rocky soil. And some are in sand, I think. When we are sharing God's word, we're not in charge of making sure the person getting it is good soil. That's not our job. Our job is to share it. Spread those seeds. Tell people about God. Be a good neighbor. Be welcoming. Wear your mask. Do the things that welcome people to God. And God will worry about the soil. We don't have to do that. So you don't go, oh, I don't think you look like you're really going to listen to God's word. You just share. And God will do the rest. We love you. We miss those of you that aren't here, and we're so glad to see those that are here with us today. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning with the 10th verse. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God in Zion, to you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house by the holiness of your temple. Your paths overflow with plenty, O God. Your paths overflow with plenty. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away, you make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, or so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys clothe themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let everyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, 
But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understand it, understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And it's a little, as you know, a little difficult talking and preaching and singing with our mask, but again, we're doing it to help each other, but um, we certainly miss seeing people's facial expressions, don't we? Well, today is the parable of the sower. You've heard this many times in Sunday school, and we, we teach this parable um, every couple of years, the parable of the sower, and Jesus is telling a story about planting seeds and harvests. And of course, for Jesus' audience, um, planting seeds and harvest would have been the daily routine. The, the whole cycle of life was built around harvest and planting, and, and you had that kind of circle of life that, that everybody was in tune with because their livelihood, their food, depended on it. So Jesus' Jesus's audience would have just been right there understanding most of us are not farmers. I don't see any farmers here, um, anybody who makes a living by farming, but many of you come from farming backgrounds. Many of you had parents or grandparents that were farmers. And um, most of us still have some connection to our, our land, our yard, and that's a good thing. We, we like to get our hands in the soil, and I think that's good for us. Lisa and I enjoy planting a vegetable garden every spring at our house, and then we have flower gardens, um, throughout the front yard and the backyard. And a couple of years ago, I got some um, giant sunflower seeds, and I thought it'd be fun to grow some big sunflowers. And so I prepared, a, a, hopefully, some good soil to plant the seeds in. Um, but it's just odd. Sometimes I have success, and sometimes I don't. I don't really know what percentage of the seeds that I plant make it to a full harvest, make it to maturity. Um, thankfully, I saved my seeds from the year before, so I can be generous like the sower in our parable and plant lots of seeds um, because I have a good supply of them. But every year, it's a little bit of a mystery of which particular plant or which particular plot of soil is going to produce the best harvest. Again, the percentage that actually sprout and grow and make it to maturity is quite small. And I've never been able to determine exactly why some thrive and some stay stunted. I know I lose plenty of my seeds to the squirrels. Squirrels love to dig up sunflower seeds and eat them. Some die to the little cutworms when they're about six inches high. Some I just don't water enough or it's just so hot they don't make it. There's too much sun. Some don't get enough sun. They're too much in the shade. And sometimes... I just let them go to the weeds and let them see if they'll make it out the weeds themselves, and rarely do they. So there's no guarantee which seed will grow to full maturity. But to the one that does sprout, the one that takes root, the one that gets plenty of sun and water and fertilizer, an amazing thing happens over time. The sunflowers that I plant can get up to 12 feet tall, so it's fun for me to see something much taller than me, and if you know like a sunflower, a lot of flowers, when they bloom, after they bloom, the buds the fall off. The sunflower, the whole plant basically is designed to produce more seed in that flower. So for weeks, the, the, the flower will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it'll start drooping over with weight as all the seeds get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so by the end of the summer, you have this big, sunflower head that's actually turned back down towards the ground. And then the birds and the squirrels come back after them again. So I cut the heads off, I put them in my garage, and I let them dry out until the winter time, and then I can break them apart and set aside some to plant next year, and the rest go in the bird feeder. So growing a plant from seed to the harvest is not easy. Jesus takes a story like this and adds some commentary. Jesus says some of the seeds fall or eaten by the birds, some are lost to the dry and rocky ground, and some are choked out by the thorns and the weeds. But those that are in good soil bear fruit and yield a hundredfold. 
So how do we become good soil? As we heard in the children's sermon, how do we become good soil? Is this something we do? Is this something that God does to us? Or is it a combination of both? Well, certainly God is involved because God creates the conditions for growth and God is the master gardener, so to speak. But we also have a part to play. Jesus says some of, are choked off by the cares of the world and the lure of wealth. This is still a threat to many, especially in our Western society, where wealth is put on a pedestal, and it can be a threat to the Christian life, the worries, the world, and the lure of wealth. I remember reading in Christian history about John Wesley, and if you know the Wesley brothers, they started the Methodist Church, wrote many great hymns that are in a hymnal, and during their time, it was a colonial America, and the biggest threat to the church was actually rum, cheap rum flooding in from the Caribbean, was um, fueled by the slave trade, cheap rum where you didn't have to pay the workers, and it would pour into the colonies, and there was such a strong amount of alcoholism that it was endangering families, and it especially affected the men of the family. And so John Wesley worked with these men, and he, and he helped get them on a method of spiritual growth, thus the term Methodism, Methodism. And he would restore families, he would get them jobs, he would get them housing, they would start to thrive, and then after a few years he noticed they would wander away from the church. And so he followed up and said, what's going on here? You're doing so well, you're not, you're, you're not drinking, you have a good job, your family's doing well, you're, you have a house. And many of them said, our goal is no longer the method of, method, of Methodism, a right living with God, our goal now is getting rich. And so church took a back burner to the worries and to the lure of wealth. Jesus warns us, much works against our faith, a faith that would bear much fruit. But also, if you remember last week, Jesus said the, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. All of us have great potential. All of us are like a seed that has everything necessary to produce a great harvest. All of us are loved by God, and God desires for all of us to bear plentiful a harvest of fruit. Sometimes it's helpful to think about what St. Paul talks about, the fruits of the Spirit, to go ahead and, and think about the fruit of the harvest as the fruits of the Spirit that St. Paul writes about. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. We can produce these good fruits of the Spirit in the life we live. Let us stay close to God, lean on God, trust in God, live a life of love, joy, and peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. The beauty of the harvest is when all these parts come together to make a whole. A good and a fruitful life is never to be taken for granted. A good and a fruitful life is never to be taken for granted. Let us celebrate what God has done with our life and what God will do. Let us give thanks that God chooses to use us to be bearers of fruit, to share Christ in our life, to proclaim God's reign, to proclaim God's love, and to proclaim God's grace. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the harvest that we are a result of, that those who shared their faith with us and modeled their faith for us, may we also be bearers of the harvest. May we also acknowledge that you are working in our lives and that you have given us all we need to bear good fruit, the fruits of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And our song of following Christ today is Blessed Assurance, so please stand as you are able, and Jacob will lead us in this.
into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. We pray for all churches during this pandemic. Inspire us to witness to your love and to share our faith. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. Creating God, we pray that we may sustainably use what you have given us. We pray for wisdom and care of the natural resources you have blessed us with. We pray for all who are affected by climate change. Guide our leaders so that future generations can enjoy the abundance of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to seek a deep and lasting peace. We give thanks for the diversity of peoples and ideas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. We pray for all who are affected by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for medical workers and county health clinics. We pray for all struggling with depression and anxiety. For those who are worrying, provide relief. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, we give thanks for the generous gift to the St. Luke's food drive through the food pantry. We give thanks to our volunteers who pack bags, shop, and distribute food. We rejoice with all who donate food. We pray for our neighbors who are food insecure. We pray for children and elderly who are malnourished. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit today for those with health concerns, for Alice, Tracy, Jane, Jen and Paul, Lou, Allie, Tammy, Yvonne, Samantha, Lauren, Helen, Robin, Bill, Brenda, Marlene, Dwayne, Michelle, Larry, Joyce, Clinton, Andrea, Charles, Paul, Mary D, Elena, Jim, Shirley and Paul, Rachel, Tammy, Kurt, Carrie, Beverly, Jody, Betty, Tammy's cousin, Jill, and Brandon, recovering from a car accident. We ask for comfort and guidance today for Trish, Cliff, Pat, Kelso, Shirley, Dorothy, the Ellsworth family on their relocation, for Debbie, Kelsey, Dottie, those alone during the COVID-19, for Betty, Joyce, Livia, Grace, those suffering with mental health issues exacerbated by this confinement, the family of Kenneth who has lost two family members, the family of Rich Calvert, on the death of his father. We offer praises today for the COVID-19 Safety Task Force, for the YMCA camp and staff, for medical teams, essential workers, teachers, Jacob, Maggie, Matt, John, Kent, Bill, Tammy, and Bridget. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord and Savior, we offer now the additional prayers of our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those prayers that are too deep for words. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and... As we the offering, uh, there will be an offering plate as you come and go. You'll see it. Um, you may place the offering in there. We are especially mindful of those who are giving online. We appreciate those gifts. And you can go to the St. Luke website and give electronically. Or you may just mail the check in to the church. Um, we appreciate the tithes and the offerings. And may God bless them. And may God bless the giver. 
want to thank Maggie Carkey for our special song today. devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old and your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been Faithful you will be, you pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us all. our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, and you will be I invite you to stand as we pray the Lord's Prayer together as Jesus has taught his disciples to pray. So we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor, and may the Lord give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is Go My Children With My Blessing. So good to see everyone today. We'll meet again next week at 8 and 10. Please join us as you are able. check on your neighbors. Thanks be to God.